<coughs> Hello everyone, my name is Arshil Ahi, hope you're well. It is Tuesday the 4th of October at 8pm. Hope you're well, hope you've had a good start to the week. Uh, would you mind just tell, telling me if you can hear me nice and loudly and clearly, that would be fantastic. So if you could just give me a quick hello, that would be fantastic. Okay, hi Bob, hi um, Mr. Chowdhury, okay perfect, everyone's saying that they can hear nice and loudly and clearly. So, just bear with me a second. And uh, Carol, sorry, I'm just there, I think we've got a slight technical issue, uh, issue but we're uh, just in the process of trying to resolve it. Hi Carol. So Carol can seem to, Carol can we can seem to hear Carol, but she can't seem to hear us. So bear with me a second. Let me just quickly. Let me just try to get hold of her. Right. Okay. So tonight's webinar is uh, a bit of an intriguing one. Uh, a bit of an intriguing one because tonight we're going to talk about. Right, so I'm sorry, I've just muted Carol for a uh, for short while, so it seems like we've got a few technical issues here. Um, because tonight we're going to be talking to Carol, and we will get her online one way or another. Uh, okay, so bear with me. Hopefully, we've got Carol online. Hi, Carol. Carol, can you hear me? Hi, Ash. Hi, everybody. I can, yes. Ah, fantastic. Carol, whatever you're doing, stop whatever you're doing. Stay exactly as you are because now, hopefully, can everyone hear Carol? Okay, perfect. So tonight we're going to be talking about how a uh, how a broke bombay turned a failing rent to rent business uh, into a cash cow, all because of serviced accommodation. Okay, so Carol. Carol, yeah. can you hear her? I can, yes. Okay, perfect. Stop whatever you're doing because it seems like you're doing the washing up or something. Stay exactly as you are. Okay. Okay, perfect. Right, sorry. So, moving on. So, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for trusting Carol and I with your time this evening because we appreciate that time is the most precious commodity. And I guarantee that this is going to be the best investment of the, or the best 90 minutes that you're going to share online with us. So, what we're going to be showing you tonight is in just over or just under 90 minutes, you'll know exactly how to make just over, or sorry, just under two and a half grand managing just one property with a strategy called serviced accommodation. We'll be showing you the secret to how to get. 98% occupancy rates. Now, does that interest you? Um, does that interest you? If you can say yes or no, just to let me know that we're on the right webinar. So, a little bit about who I am and what I do. So, my name's Arsh Ilahi. I run a group of 12 property companies with my business partner, Aki Ilahi. Uh, together, we're landlords, letting agents, and I'm also the, the author of a bus of Oh, sorry, a best-selling author of a book called Boom, Bust and Back Again. Uh, I've been involved in property full-time for the last 16 years, so you could say that I'm, I'm a bit of a veteran at it. I've been running a letting agency for the last um, eight years called Red Me Now. And also, I'm a property investor, I'm a property trainer, I'm a mentor, and I've helped hundreds of people who are hungry for change to achieve financial freedom. So that's enough about me. Now, Carol, what I'd like you to do, if possible, is just give me uh, an indication as to who you are, so uh, what your background is, but more importantly, what brought you to become a serviced accommodation investor? Because uh, from, from what we've told, is that you are pretty much self-taught, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so... Who is Carol Cooney? 
Well, I'm a 53-year-old grandmother who spent 30 years in the uh, bar, hotel, pub, nightclub, nightclub trade at all levels. And um, because the bar trade in the UK has sort of died off in recent years through changing trends, etc., uh, seven years ago we found ourselves out of a job. So um, I worked in a call centre for a while and um, then eventually um, a friend suggested that I needed to help them a bit with some property and I sort of got into property as well and uh, one thing led to another and uh, I finished up in service accommodation uh, because it's so similar to what I've done for most of my working life. Okay, so your background in, is in hospitality, would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but that's not a bad thing because like I said, there's lots of people who have worked in pubs. Would you say that pretty much people who have worked in pubs uh, and although you've got some ho some experience in the hotel industry, would you say that pretty much from what you've done so far that anyone could do this? Definitely, because um, over the years a lot of our staff were university people who were working during the summer, going on to be lawyers, doctors, teachers, anything, and then some people worked in hospitality full time as well. So anyone, nearly everybody has worked in hospitality at some point when they were young, so it's, it's quite easy to do. Okay, perfect. So, but here we are today, talking about you as a property investor, sharing your service and accommodation journey, where I've, which you've learned to over the last two years, being pretty much involved in the business, doing a healthy cash flow of 10 grand per month. Is yeah. that correct? That's correct, yeah. So before we start any further, one thing I like to always uh, try and figure out is who have we got online and what's your experience with the service accommodation? Now when we say that, I want to know is, do you know anything about service accommodation? Do you know uh, absolutely loads about service accommodation or something in the middle? Just so that we can kind of cater the webinar to exactly what we've got. So we've got Rob who's online, says that Ian knows quite a lot. We've got um, a few people, a couple of people said in the middle, um, we've got Phil who's got some SA experience, um, some people saying absolutely zilch. Um, so you know we've got, to be fair, there's a, there's a fair bit of experience and there's quite a few newbies in the room as well and there's nothing wrong with that because what we'll do, we'll start from scratch so that we've got everyone on the same level playing field. And I'll pretty much give you the overview as to what service accommodation is. So service, well, best way of summarising service accommodation is the highest cash flow property management system. And pretty much what it, it to summarise it, would you say, Carol, the best way of summarising it is, it is pretty much similar to the hotel industry and the, well, the rental industry. What would your summary of service accommodation be? Yeah, basically, um, it's exactly like running a minimum, uh, sorry, a mini hotel. Um, in one respect, you're a de facto hotelier, uh, but with all the systems that we have, it's not like you have to do it 24/7. Not at all. Far from it. Okay, perfect. Right. So, um, with all the pro properties that you've got in Carol. Just before, I don't want to throw you in at the deep end, but do you rent uh, any of the properties that you've done on service accommodation? Do you own them? No, I got them all on rent to rent. Okay, perfect. And that's the beauty with this strategy. And I wanted to throw that in pretty much from the start is that it is a very, well, you can take properties off of the landlord on a rent to rent strategy and run it, run it as a service accommodation. And the beauty of it is that you rent a house or room by the night to customers, not tenants. Does that make sense? So as Carol put it, you're running it as a mini hotel. So the question here, Carol, is it really the best management system? Because what you can do is that, well, the way that we've calculated the figures is that you make two times as much as what you would from a HMO. You make three times as much as if what you would from a rent to rent. And here's the staggering thing is that you make ten times as much 
what you would from a single let. And the beauty is that one thing that we're going to be talking about shortly is the profit calculator. Uh, because Carol, can you just let us know what the average, you know, what you work your figures out on, or what occupancy rate do you work it work on to break even? Um, I tend to uh, sixty five percent is the hotel standard for break even. Um, but I tend to work my figures on uh, fifty percent as well. Uh, because if you can get profit at 50% occupancy, that's where you need to bite the landlord's hand off because you're onto a real winner. Okay, perfect. So, you, you know, the beauty, uh, I'll tell you what, let's do this now, is one of, one of the documents that Carol and um, both I use as well is a, a, doc, is a spreadsheet that I've pretty much created uh, myself. And here's something that we're going to be talking about. Is here's a spreadsheet, and so we've got the incomings and you've got the outgoings. Now, here's some of the figures that some of uh, we've picked up and we've just randomly input here. And the reason why we've put these in as well is, is to show that, technically speaking, if you don't know your figures, yes, as with any business, as with any business, you can make a loss, but in actual fact, when you do it and you do it really well, it can be really rewarding. And when we look at it, is that we're looking at it from, remember what we said earlier, we're talking about renting it by the night. So they are becoming a customer. And we've got all the days of the week here, and we've got all the rents. Of what, uh, not when we say rents, we call it, I, I'm still of the old school way of thinking, but the charges per night, which then gives us a charge per week, per month, per room, uh, per annum, which then gives us per week per uh, full occupancy, but then the break, what's really interesting is understanding the break-even point because as with any business, you want to know exactly at what point do you break even. Now for argument's sake, um, you want to know how many nights per week do you need to rent that property out for for the whole month to be able to uh, say, well I've covered my cost and as a result of that, uh, you're now into profit. Now, Carol said that she currently works on around a 65% occupancy, but sometimes she has worked on 50%. 50%. So, on a, uh, the rent that she's paying a landlord, let's just say it's £1,000 a month. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, on an occupancy rate of three, um, 65%, she's producing around three grand. Now, taking into consideration, she's only making some decent money there. So you've got to really look at your figures. Now, I'm going to talk you through the basics as, as to why we think this is a great strategy. And then Carol's going to really come in and talk about the strategy, how we can make it work, how you guys can make it work, and uh, the benefits of the system that she's got in place. So <clears throat> reason why service accommodation is such a great strategy, I'll give you uh, the first added bonus and the great bonus. Now, when you when you create a HMO, you have to deal with six tenants. You have to deal with six, oh, well, let's say six tenants um, without getting planning permission. Now, if you're not in an Article Four area, it works really well. Now, just imagine you are in an Article Four area. And for those that don't know what Article Four is, um, Article Four directive is a scheme that's been brought in by the local government, basically saying that any HMO now requires planning permission. Anything above a single let requires planning permission. Now, what they haven't taken into consideration, um, what they haven't taken into consideration is that service accommodation doesn't fall into that category because the people who stop in service accommodation are generally stopping there for one, two, three, four, or five nights. So it is their temporary accommodation and not their permanent residence. And that's the difference between a HMO and service accommodation. With a HMO, that person is generally using that address as their permanent residence. People who go to hotels are there for the night. And the beauty of it is, is that this industry alone has approximately 21 million tourists, uh, tourists that holiday in the UK, which means that it gives us a, a full 7.1% of the UK's economy, which is part of 121 
billion pound pie. Now, the reason they're quite large numbers, but when you look at some of the hotel chains, obviously you've got like the you've got the Hiltons, you've got the and then you go down to the budgets, you've got the Ibis, you've got the tra Premier Travel Inn, you've got the travel lodges, etc., etc. Now, service accommodation, technically speaking, is a direct competition for those. Question is, and I, I can imagine some of you are thinking, but why would I want to go in direct comp? So, uh, sorry, one person has just put that. My my voice has is not clear. Uh, can everyone hear me loudly, and clearly? Yes. Okay. So everyone else is saying that they can. So Sammy, if you want to, uh, if you want to log yourself out and log yourself back in, uh, you should be able to get the sound. Now, the question you've got to ask yourself is, why would you want to compete with all these? Um, why would you want to compete with all these people? Now difference between a hotel. Now just put yourself in the shoe of, well, just imagine that you're going away for the weekend. Sorry, Carol? Yes, Ash, yes. Every time you move we can hear something from your microphone. Oh, sorry. So, uh, just imagine that you go away for the weekend and you book into a hotel. When you walk into that hotel, you know, if it's a, now if it's a Hilton or if it's uh, quite a prestigious hotel, it could be quite a large room. But when you go to a place like the travelling and you know, your travel lodges, etc., they can be quite small or small rooms. Would you agree? And the beauty of it is, is that they don't have to adhere to HMO room sizes because they're not permanent accommodation. Now, different is um, different is is that for the service accommodation unit. Just imagine there's a two bedroom, just imagine that you take on a two bedroom apartment. Now if you let that out, whoever is staying there has got the whole use or the sole use of that apartment and it pretty much is like a mini hotel. Well it's the difference between renting in a flat and stopping in a hotel. You've got the benefits of a flat but only paying for it by the night as you would the hotel. And the average Brit now takes four holidays a year which is equivalent to two weekend breaks, one week holiday and two week holidays and not all of them will be abroad. Now with obviously with the exit of Brexit, uh, with Brexit, now obviously in comparison to the Euro we may be considered, it may be expensive for us to go abroad, hence why the emphasis of UK holidays has now come back in trend. <clears throat> and just going on, just keep going forward is that a lot of service accommodation is booked online. So we'll be going through some assistance. So we'll be looking at booking.com, we'll be looking at some of the other service providers that allow you to, where you can book your accommodation online. In 2012, 80% of accommodation was booked online. So then the only question is whether you do it on your mobile or actually on your computer. Now I know that when I go and stay away, I always, first thing that I do, I always look on my mobile because the majority of them all got apps. So, the reason why we say that is because companies like Booking.com spent a massive $2.8 billion on advertising in 2015 and they are actually Google's biggest advertising customer and that is actually a fact. They're currently spending 30% of their revenue on advertising and the reason why we we've put this in is because Booking.com is such a powerful tool for service accommodation. And if you can't beat them, you know, the motto goes, you go and work with them. Now, another one is Airbnb. Now, when we're talking about so Booking.com, we're talking about Airbnb. These are obviously the service providers. <clears throat> They've got nearly a million tourists using Airbnb to visit London each year, which gives the London economy approximately 1.3 billion pounds. Airbnb guests stay on average between 4.6 nights compared to 3.1 for typical visitors to the UK. Just give you a good indication as to what's actually happening in the marketplace. And the co-founder and CEO of um, Airbnb said, Airbnb is creating a door to an open world and bringing tourists to neighbourhoods they may have missed. And with Airbnb, more people are earning the extra money they need to pay their bills or pursue their dreams. It's time to work with them to pursue their dreams. 
The final thing that I'm going to say before I pass on to Carol now is because um, George Osborne, God bless him, he despises landlords. And so what lots of investors started to do, they started to look at how, instead of becoming a landlord, you become an entrepreneur. And how, working in the sharing economy from 2017, you don't actually have to declare or pay tax on the first thousand pound you earn. Now that's quite interesting because remember George Osborne really didn't like landlords, he really didn't like the private rented sector, he really didn't like HMOs. So this has really stemmed out of as well, investors hate for George Osborne and looking at a new strategy. <coughs> Now what we're going to be doing is handing over to Carol. Now Carol's going to be talking to you about the simple steps that she's achieved in the service accommodation success. Now Carol, um, first of all, Carol, are you still online? You've gone very I'm quiet. I'm still here, yeah. I was just okay. listening. <laughs> okay, perfect. So what I want you to do, my dear, is all these guys are obviously here to listen to you and tell, tell them exactly what you've done, how you've done it, how you found the property, how you control it, how you furnish it, how you fill it, and how you make it a money maximizer. So okay. over to you. Okay. Um, well, good evening everybody and sorry for the slight technical problems from my end at the very beginning. Um, if we can go back a slide, Ash, I'll start with find if that's okay. Yep. Okay, so to find, um, you do the exact same as you do if you were doing rent to rent strategy. A lot of property strategies overlap a bit. So to find, you do the exact same as you would rent to rent. In other words, um, just look on Right Move and Zoopla and Gumtree and uh, phone up landlords or phone up estate agents even. Um, look in your local newspaper. You can do a bit of leafleting, a bit of advertising. The same as you would for any other strategy for when you're looking to control a property. So then once you gain control, number two, um, at that point you would have a management agreement with the landlord. Um, it's always best to be honest with the landlord about what you're doing. I always say to my landlords, um, would it be okay if we can do it as a service? Um, for the simple reason that if you try to lie to them or be dishonest with them, um, in general I prefer not to lie anyway, but um, basically somebody will find out because it's going to be on booking.com, it's going to be on Airbnb, Expedia and all the rest of it. The council are going to get wind of it, so you have to um, make sure that you're alright with the council and that type of thing as well. Um, so you're better off being straight up about that from the start. So once you've that established, um, you move on to number three, the furniture. Um, I always try and just to sidestep for a second, get a month's free rent off of my landlord at the beginning because um, it takes about a month to set it up with booking.com, have a word with the council, get the furniture in and so forth. So you can either just buy the individual items in places like Ikea, Gumtree, um, Asda, cheap furniture places or you can get a company such as Landlord Smart or Fusion Furniture to uh, come and uh, do it for you. Um, for some people find that more convenient because it's all done in the one hit. Um, the guys come and they stage it and set it up for you and everything. Some people prefer to just get the furniture individually themselves. The furniture um, that's needed would be the exact same as a rent to rent or a HMO. Uh, because there's going to be a common living area, bedrooms, bathrooms, that type of thing. And then what okay, was the fifth is, one? Uh, sorry, uh, Carol, <laughs> just before, before you go on. Now, one thing I yeah. just want to elaborate on is that <clears throat> you don't have to uh, look on all the portals for properties. That's the first thing. Obviously, if you're taking it on on rent to rent, there's nothing stopping you from going direct to the landlord. The other thing I want to also elaborate on is that the beauty with this strategy is when you do a rent to rent and you were going to turn it into HMO, before you would need a property to have approximately four or five rooms for it to make any decent money. Now the beauty with service accommodation is that you could very easily take on something as simple as a studio flat, a one bedroom flat or a two bedroom flat which previously you would have had to have bat away to make this right. strategy work. And the beauty is, is that 
how many how many different apartments are there now? I'm based in Wolverhampton, which is ten miles um, ten miles south of Birmingham. Now, in Birmingham city centre, there are stacks of apartments which are fully furnished, which landlords are struggling to let. Um, and what what we do really well on is approaching these landlords, taking these properties off them, in actual fact, fully furnished. So, you know, technically speaking, although Carol said, yes, you will need to create it, depending on the location, there'll be a lot of landlords out there who will already have fully furnished um, units. Now, in most of the apartments, they've already got integrated oven and hob. Most of them will have like a little a dining table. Now, you may need to put some beds and some lamps in, but you're not having to go to the full extent as if you were fire alarms, fire doors, etc., as if you were to do a HMO. Now, moving moving forward, the furniture. Now, Carol, would you say that this is typically what you would have in each room? Yeah, that, this is typical. And uh, just to pick up on your point about furniture, Ash, um, today I've just been negotiating with another landlord in Cambridge for another SA, um, and that's going to be fully furnished. And I've been there, and the furniture is lovely. So, um, as you say, you can get them furnished in advance to save yourself time as well. But yeah, what you've got written on there on the slide is um, pretty much spot on for what you'd want. Because the one thing that you've got to remember that you're creating, you're creating a home from home. So when people now just, now the way that I always envisage it is that when I'm leaving my home, and I live in quite a comfortable home, when I'm going to stay away for a weekend or even me and my wife go away for a two, three, four day break, we want to stop in somewhere equally as comfortable. So when we're looking for something, and you've got to remember that these guys are going to be paying you decent money to be stopping in, they don't want to stop in a hostel, they don't want to stop in a bed sit. What they're after is something that's equally as comfortable, and as a result of that, you'll be charging the premium prices for that. Now I know there's lots of, you know, with all due respect, we've trained lots of people over the years, and there's some people charging 180, 190, 200 pounds a night. And they're, okay, they're in locations where they may be able to command that, but then in certain areas, for argument's sake, remember, three points, break even points. You've always got to understand what your break even point is, because once you've got that in mind from day one, you'll be able to A, calculate how much rent you can give to the landlord, and B, what your break even point is, so that you know exactly how many days per week you need to occupy that room in order for it to be viable. Now, that we've got quite a few questions, uh, which we're going to be going through shortly, so we just need to get through the presentation. But again, going into the kitchen and the uh, going through the furnishings and going into the kitchen. Now, remember, guys, when these guys come for a three or four uh, or even extended weekend or a long break, they don't want to be dragging around their washing machine, their cups and pans. Now, when they go to a hotel, you know, generally speaking, they they won't be doing much cooking in their room because technically speaking, what they've got in their room is a tea making facility, especially if you go somewhere like the Cremio Travel Inn. However, when they've got a service department, they expect stuff like the cutlery, the crockery, the pots and pans, the cups and the glasses, because they're not going to have that. And obviously it's going to have the integrated washing machine, dishwasher and fridge because it is a home from a home. And again, moving forward into the living room, they're going to expect to see the sofa. They're going to expect to see the TV, a dining table. You know, a, a lot of SA providers provide Wi-Fi. And then we'll be talking about the a money, uh, sorry, the money maximizer. So, Carol, is there anything that you want to add to that? Um, no, um, I'd say everybody provides Wi-Fi, and if the Wi-Fi isn't top of the range fast the guests will complain about it. So even if you can economize in something else, I'd invest in the Wi-Fi because the Wi-Fi is like somebody's right arm these days. Okay, well just stopping you there, Carol. Now, yeah. uh, for the guys that are online now, how many of you guys, when you're searching online for somewhere to stay, what's the first thing that you look for?
what what is it that what's the first thing that you look for when you're stopping somewhere and you're going away for the weekend? Okay, so Mike has come back in straight away and goes parking and Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi, decent quality room location. <clears throat> now the the one thing that I look for when I'm um, going to stop or going to stop away is a location. But the first thing should I do, and Phil has hit the nail on the head, is the reviews, because the one thing that not many people talk about is the reviews because this business thrives off reviews. If you've got a bad review, guess what? It may it may be that quite a, a, you may not decide to stop there. Now, Carol, you've been doing this for a short while now. Now, what would yeah. you say? How's your reviews been? Um, my general reviews are between eight and nine, and uh, on Booking.com officially, eight is very good and uh, 9 is superb and 10 is fabulous. Um, main, most of my reviews hover around the 8.7, 8.8. Okay, perfect. And that, that's it. Now, for argument say, if you were looking for a pro property, uh, if you're looking for accommodation, and let's just say that you were looking in Cambridge and you came across Carol's property, now, if you were reading her reviews, you would think that you know 8.8 .8 out of 10 actually very good going and that's that's the key obviously there's there's lots of different channels there's uh, of marketing the property so we've talked about a couple of them Airbnb and booking.com there's so many more that we can talk about how many different methods are there of advertising Carol um, well you can advertise on all the uh, large portals such as um, your Airbnb, Booking.com, Expedia, and so forth. There's about ten or twelve of those that I know of, um, okay, and perfect. also at at local level. And you can also advertise with local firms that have staff migrating to and forth. Lots of ways. Okay, perfect. Now Rob's coming with quite a good question. Rob Tomlinson goes with a HMO generally six bed average with shared kitchens. This setup of service accommodation would surely be a nightmare to manage, surely. Now, Rob, you would say that because you're looking at it from a landlord's point of view. From a HMO point of view, I would pretty much probably agree. But we're talking about a different type of clientele here. We're not talking about someone that's going to be stopping in the room for six months. We're going to be talking about people that are going to be stopping there for two to three nights. Now, there are lots of ways to systemize it, and Carol has systemized it. Hence why I've got her on the webinar this evening. Now, you've got to also remember that these guys that are booking to stay in your accommodation, they're not your average tenant because they're not a tenant. They are a customer. And once you start to get your head around that, it starts to look very differently. Now, the difference here is when a customer books online, not only do they book online, but they leave you their credit card details should there be any damage. Which means that it's pretty much almost like a recession proof and a risk proof business. Because if they cause any damage, as with a HMO tenant, they can disappear into the night. Here, you've got their credit card to charge. Now, I don't know about you, but every time I've checked into a hotel, the first thing they ask for is, do you mind if we take your credit card for security or can we swipe your credit card for a minimum of £500? For, uh, which could be refunded upon checkout. Does that make sense? And so you've got to think about it as this is not a HMO. What we're talking about is an accommodation, a service accommodation strategy, which you're not dealing with tenants, you're dealing with customers. The customers are a different clientele who will be leaving deposits, who will be booking through portals, who will be giving advice and support, who will also be taking guarantees. So there's lots of things to take into consideration here. Now moving on, <coughs> so, so one thing that we're just going to mention is that Carol is running um, a full day training uh, where she'll be talking you through exactly what she does in each of the four and a half steps so that you can set up your first accommodation properly, cheaply and quickly and how you can make just under two and a half grand managing one property using simple step. Uh, just talking about how she manages to look at the occupancy rate, uh, create a profit from an occupancy rate of 65% and how you can generate a great return on 98% occupancy all year round. 
and how you can become a property entrepreneur and not a cleaner. Because one of the questions here is, uh, Jimmy's asked is, how do you deal with all the cleaning, the linens, the towels, and after checkout? That's Jimmy. Carol doesn't and isn't a cleaner, and she doesn't envisage on being a cleaner, but she's got people that are. And she'll be showing you how to build and manage a reliable, hardworking, and loyal team. And she's looking at how booking.com is a big dog in tourism. Because we're going to be going through, uh, going through some of the channel managers shortly. We'll be showing you how to make your adverts stand out in a crowded marketplace. The reason why we say that is you can imagine now, there's going to be lots of people jumping up on this strategy now. Service accommodation is a buzzword in property. There is no doubt about it. Um, okay, so Gan oh, sorry, just going through some of the questions. Uh, so Ganesh is put, does the numbers work in London too? Now, that's a great question, Ganesh. And the reason Hell why yeah. I say that is because it worked in London better like no other. Now, for argument's sake, you're going to say, well, how does it work in London? Because surely the rents are high. But, sh but then, again, so are the rates per night. <clears throat> Just give me an example. Let's just say that um, in some locations in London, some of the rooms are like circa two, three hundred pounds per night. You know, depending on where you are, in somewhere like Knightsbridge, some of the rooms can be thousands of pounds per night. And the reason why we say that is just purely because in London, you've got to look at all the different things that are happening around the location. So. Let's not just talk about London, let's talk about Milton Keynes, let's talk about Liverpool, let's talk about Manchester, let's talk about Wolverhampton. Wolverhampton's got quite a large football club for a small city. Every other weekend we have 28,000 people go to watch Wolverhampton Wanderers. Then we've got the Civic, then we've got the Civic Hall, we've got the Civic Centre where we've got large apps that come. Now, not all these people are going to descend from Wolverhampton. There's going to be people coming from all over the UK to come and watch these acts. Now, these people need to stop somewhere. They may not all want to stop in a hotel. Now, I'll give me an example. Now, when you go to Manchester, if you go to Manchester on a weekend that Man United or Man City are playing at home, it's pretty much guaranteed that you're not going to get a hotel room. All the hotel rooms will be booked up and completely out, uh, booked up, and they would have been booked up weeks in advance. Hence why serviced accommodation works so well. Does that make sense? We'll be showing you how to make your adverts stand out in a crowded marketplace, so you're the one that's getting booked night after night after night after night. What we'll be showing you is how you can play it by the rules so that you can profit by Booking.com's marketplace. And remember, we're talking about Booking.com tonight, but there are actually 12 other sites that you can get yourself booked onto. We'll be showing you how to write your listing once and have it automatically listed on all of them. The simple secret saves you hours. The secret is called a channel manager. I don't mind telling you that. Because a channel manager, all it is, it's like a portal that you update all the other bits and pieces uh, where you update it once and it will send it out to all 12 channels where you can advertise your property. That piece of advice alone is, wor is you know, worth its weight in gold. So there's quite a few questions coming through. <clears throat> so the money maximizer is how to sell your customers something else. How to do this, what they want, what makes the most money. Now for argument's sake, just give me one example here. So how many times have you been to a hotel and you've forgotten something? Or how many times has it been that you, as a result of leaving the hotel, automatically you receive something as a result of that and you've been charged for it? There are lots of ways of maximizing from the customer whilst they're in your control, whilst you've got them stopping at your property. And we'll be talking about the five minute video that saves you hundreds of nights calls. Now, lots of people have talked about well, how do we get the tenant to check? How do we get the customer to check in? How do we get the customer to check out? We'll be showing you a five minute video that Carol has created that saves you hundreds of late night calls, giving you your customers a better experience. 
giving them the complete introduction as to what to do in the scenarios of checking in, checking out, where to leave the keys, who to give the keys to, how to leave the accommodation, what to do, what to include, where to host it, and how to make the customer watch it. Now, normally, Carol and I charge 997 for that, but we're not asking for that. What I want you to do is just stay till the end of the webinar, because for now, what we're going to be talking about, Carol, is filling it. What are the best sites? Which is best? Um, of all of them, you'll get most of your work, as it were, off of Booking.com, but the next two main competitors after that would be Expedia and Late Rooms. Okay, perfect. So, um, which would you say is the best? As in um, what revenue terms, who, who provides you with the most revenue? Uh, Booking.com provides me with the most revenue because the commission structures for each of them is all around the same. But um, so that's not going to change. But yeah, I get most of my bookings off of Booking.com, oh, well over ninety percent. <clears throat> okay, so Carol, what's your trick here then? You've got a very high ninety-eight percent occupancy rate. By the room, by the night. How do you work it? By the room, by the night. Okay. Some so people. Got, uh, what, what, what I mean uh, by that is, some people will advertise that they'll only have a minimum stay for three nights, and yes, that does work for some people. But for me, I think it narrows my market. Um, I don't have a minimum amount of night stay, and um, I find that if I was trying to offer the whole apartment, it's not always convenient for four or six or eight people. <laughs> to stay there for four nights for whatever reason all year round and a lot of my clients are either contractors or business people so they're often traveling alone on business or contract work um, so they only need one room for X amount of nights or for one night or they could be in a different city the following day or whatever the case may be. Okay, so what's your management sequence then because people obviously want to know that if they're going to get involved in the strategy, they don't want to be consumed in the business. They want to run it as a business, just like you're doing. Obviously, yeah. you started out somewhere, you now got to this point where you're at financial freedom, and you're, how much time do you actually put into the business? Five hours a week between all of them. I've got five, as you know, and I've got two in production, and I've got a third one, which um, I don't want to jinx it because it's going to be a big one. Uh, but that's in, in negotiation as well at the moment. But yeah, uh, so I have a cleaner. Um, I have somebody to do the laundry. Um, my cleaner makes the beds. Um, it always, if you're interviewing a cleaner, it's always good to mention that actually we don't want you to just clean and hoover and mop and so forth. Uh, making beds come into the equation as well. And uh, then uh, my uh, PA Vicky helps with a lot of the bookings and the calls during the week. And uh, all day PA do the late night calls, which okay. late night calls are very, very seldom anyway. Okay, so in Indy's come here, Srela. She goes, Is Carol saying that she rents out two rooms to two different people at any one time? Would you rent it out by the apartment or do you rent it out per room per night? Per room per night. Okay, if someone wants to take both rooms, they have to pay for both rooms, is that correct? Correct. Okay, perfect. So, sis, so just clarify that for you, Indy. Um, so, as you can see, Carol's pretty much got it systemized. So, she's not that taking any calls late at night. Uh, um, but all that PA is dealing with any calls at night. Uh, and she's also got people in there cleaning, washing, and making the bed so that Carol's not running around doing it. Now, in your management secrets, um, Carol, what would you tell us about your yeah. five-minute video? Um, well, my five-minute video, um, just uh, I shot the video myself, uh, so Steven Spielberg doesn't have to worry on that score. Um, but I just walk up to the house and uh, unlock the lockbox and show the keys without showing the code of the lockbox because we change that regularly anyway. Uh, although there's a much better way of doing lockboxes uh, than lockboxes that I've discovered since then. But anyway, back to the lockbox. Um, then we walk into the house and um, 
Um, a lot of my fridges and freezers and so forth are integrated. So I just open the cupboard and I say to the into the you know video, that's the fridge there, the freezer is there, that's the dishwasher. Um, if you need an extra towel, you can get one out of this cupboard. The Wi-Fi is over here. This is the guest information folder. Um, all the information, the, the guest information folder is a thing I print out for all of them. Um, again, you only have to copy and paste once you've done it the once, but just gives you local taxi numbers, local area, where, where to catch the bus, uh, where the shop is, usual type of things people would just need to know when they arrive. So, Carol, is this something that you've created that you'd be happy to uh, start sharing with people that we're going to be talking about uh, a little later on? But you do this for each of the for each of the properties that you take on. So you've pretty much got like a, a mini mini bible that you put yeah, in each yeah. one. Well, the video obviously goes out to anyone that's booked the apartment or the room, and then uh, when they type, when they do you email do you email them the document or do you leave the document in the property? No, it's a folder in the property, but um, I give them all the transport information and anything they're likely to need to know in the advance email. We also send an advance text and make a phone call to make sure that they've read the text and watched the video. And um, I explain to them that the local information that I've just described is in the guest information folder, usually on the dining table in any one of the properties as they walk in. So they know exactly where to find it because it actually appears in the video in each separate house as well. So I make it as easy as possible for them. Um, all the stuff that I did in that respect I've only had to do once. Uh, and um, by making things as easy as possible for them and giving them as much information as possible in advance, um, whereas it's so easy to just copy and paste an email and send it on to somebody else, that really cuts down on the questions and the what time can I check in at and the type of things that they would be likely to ask. Although I don't know much about that these days because I don't really deal with it anymore. Okay. So here's a, uh, can you talk us through this property, <coughs> Carol? So it's uh, Surface Drive in Cambridge. Um, yeah. And the former property that you took on, you're paying the landlord uh, 1700 So just looking on the figures that you've told us about here. <coughs> Excuse me. So the turnover is £5,689 per month. Uh, the rent yeah. that you're paying the landlord is £1,700 a month, and the costs. Is sixteen hundred thirty. So in that cost, what yeah. what do you calculate for there? So you've obviously the cost of for utilities, for cleaning, for linen, yeah. for for what else? For Wi-Fi. Yeah, all of those uh, plus your channel manager. Because I have a channel manager now. I have too many rooms. So there's there's no way I'd be able to manage them by myself. So yeah, your channel manager, your booking dot com your cleaning, even my accountancy and bookkeeping fees and my petrol uh, because obviously you, you know you can't just sort of suck those up they're, they're, they're still a business expense so it all has to be included and uh, yeah so that was what my turnover and profit was during the summer um, during the winter it's almost as good because Cambridge has plenty for reasons for people to visit all year round. It is more of a tourist city and now a flourishing business city as well. So with what well, with the hospital and the universities and all the rest of it, there's lots of reasons for lots of people from different walks of life to come to Cambridge quite frequently all year round. Okay, fantastic. So this generates a profit, £2,359 per month. And you've got quite a yeah. few of these cows, so it's making a very healthy profit. Yeah, yeah, I've got you three know. of them um, around that level, and then the two apartments, they're making slightly less uh, because they're two two-bedroom apartments. However, they are very popular, as you were saying earlier on. Okay, fantastic. So again, to, just talking about something that Carol... Uh, okay, so... Bill has asked, how long do you normally take rents for, how long do you normally take the contract on from the landlord for? Now, just so that I can touch base on that. Now, Phil, I like to either take rents from a landlord for approximately either five or seven years. Now, the reason why I do that is 
because it ties me into uh, a decent amount of commitment. And not only that, when I'm doing rent to rent, especially, is that I want to know that if I'm going to be spending some money on the property, I'm going to get sufficient time to make a decent amount of cash flow over the period. How long do you normally take it for, Carol? Um, three to five years. Um, I've got a three-year contract on that particular one with the landlord, which started in April 2015. Uh, but because I've taken on several more from him since, um, I know for a fact from both sides, as soon as that uh, contract expires in 2018, we're both going to be renewing it because he's delighted with the whole situation. Okay, so just quickly, we're going to go through this quickly, Carol, and then we're going to, we're going to spend a fair bit of time on Q&A. Is that okay with you? Yeah, fine. So the service accommodation masterclass that Carol has put on specifically for you is going to be showing you how you can you too online can actually make the same just by managing uh, the, the same amount of properties and by getting uh, occupant creating a profit from an occupancy rate of sixty five percent. We'll be showing you how to become an entrepreneur and not a cleaner and a bed maker. Or again, we'll be showing you talking you through Booking dot com as well as the other 11 portals, as well as talking through the uh, channel manager. And we'll be showing you how to systematically and automatically list on all of them, which save you thousands well, time and how to become the money maximizer. Carol will be sharing her five minute video, as well as her little Bible, which you can duplicate for properties in your location. Now normally, uh, we'll be looking for uh, 997 but what we're after we're looking for standout testimonial this is the first time Carol's going to be running this workshop because Carol is generally been a person that wants to go out and just do it she doesn't really like talking about it and as you may have gathered from the conversation that Carol and, uh, and I have had this evening she's quite a shy and retiring type uh, but one thing that she's not afraid of is uh, pulling, her, pulling her sleeves up and get, getting involved so what we're looking for, people who will stand out and create us testimonials, people that will inspire other people to realize their dreams. So what we're doing is that we're actually offering the opportunity, and we'll be sharing the date with you in a second, I think it's the 29th of Saturday, 29th of October in Birmingham, for you to share your success. Uh, you can come on the whole workshop for 697. It's a one day, uh, it's a one day course. And all you've got to do is to simply follow uh, to simply follow the link down below. So it's bit.ly forward slash sa hyphen mc. So we're going to be going through the questions, and we're so confident. I'm so confident in that what Karanti is going to be able to deliver is of solid uh, content that we're even offering a hundred percent money back guarantee. So if you attend the course. And until lunch, if you find that you're not completely satisfied, all you've got to do is say so, and we'll give you a full refund. No questions asked, no hassles or forms to fill out, no problem at all. <clears throat> so the date is Saturday, 29th of October. The location will be Birmingham in the West Midlands, and the price of it is 697 So it is an introductory price offer. Uh, for those who attend the workshop, we will help you find your first deal. So with the assistance of Carol, Will be every time you go and have a look at the property, you'll be coming back to Carol and say, "Here's what it is. Here's the location. What can we do with it? How many?" And we'll be scrutinising it to make sure that it works. We'll be showing you how to assess your first deal to make the numbers work. We'll even be showing you how to get the deal funded if needs be. Now, for argument's sake, there may be quite a few people on this webinar. Um, now, John has put, "Is there a deal for partners?" So I'll tell you what, you what we can do, John, is for, for only tonight, and we're saying only tonight, so for Tuesday, the 4th of October, up until midnight, if people book on, I will allow you to bring your business partner for free. Now, I didn't put that anywhere on the webinar because I didn't think anyone was going to ask it, admittedly, but after tonight, it will no longer be available. So you can bring your business partner for free. And the reason why I say that is because I want you guys to obviously be on there, um, and Ron says that unfortunately um, I can't be on there that day. Are there, are there any other dates? At the moment, we've only got the one date booked in, but I'm going to show you Ron in a second another way that you can get involved. <coughs> so, 
I wanted to talk you through this because we want to talk, walk you through your first deal. We're that confident that what we've got is golden content. That every time you go to a property, you should be able to look at this, that, and the other. And by that, having a look at it, does it work for rent to rent? Does it work for service accommodation? Does it work for HMO? And then more important, we're going to be then showing you how to assess it to see if the numbers work. And when we say that, we're going to even show you how to get the deal funded. There will be lots of people on this webinar, unfortunate, that will love to do strategy, but they may not have the funds to, for argument's sake, furnish the property. We'll be showing you. Uh, I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind sharing this content with you as well. If there's a platform called SimpleEquity.co.uk, and it's a business that I'm involved in, and we're here to help people who, um, like yourself, who have got property property knowledge, who have got the ability and know-how to go out and grow a business, and we'll get it help funded. Now, if you like the thought of that. That is specifically for people who will come on the workshop. And what is what we're aiming to do is to give you that difference. And now, Carol, why don't you tell us about what the difference it's made to your lifestyle? So, with the cash flow, what is it that you do with all your cash flow? Um, I'm saving it at the moment <laughs> uh, because I want to save up some deposits from for some more houses for myself as well. Uh, as regards the cars and the holidays, um, I'll probably have a nice holiday Christmas for sure. Okay. Now, uh, we're just going to put this in there, but what happens if you do nothing? Don't worry. You don't have to worry about learning something new. You don't have to worry about taking any action. You don't actually have to worry about getting out of your comfort zone, which also means that your life will not change because you'll be at the same old cycle that you'll be going round and round, thinking about it and getting the same old results. <clears throat> so to learn these secrets at no risk to you at all, all you're going to do is grab this prof, uh, grab this at the half price off it because obviously we're doing it at six nine five, and all you're going to go is go to that link bit.ly forward slash sa hyphen mc. Now, if you're still unsure about it, you're thinking, well, I can't make that weekend. Now, there's three ways that we're going to allow you to attend. So you can either attend in person. If you got, <coughs> excuse me. If you can't attend in person, you can live stream the whole event from the comfort of your own home, just like you do now. But you'll get to see Carol in uh, in you'll get get to see Carol presenting from the room, and you'll also have all the documentation prior to the event. So you'll be watching it from the comfort of your own home, and or you could purchase the recordings and all the associated documents by securing the place tonight. Remember, guys, there isn't an excuse. You can do this. This is such a simple strategy. Anyone can do this because we're not asking you to go off and create a HMO. We're asking you simply to look at a property in a different way of light. Okay, so uh, Phil, uh, Phil has put, can a partner be a potential business partner that we already know? Uh, yes, it can fill. It can be any partner. It could be your best friend. It could be your business partner. It could be your marital partner. Um, so anyone that you dedicate. Uh, okay, so Sammy says, do we do weekday instead of weekend? Unfortunately, this one is booked for Saturday. Uh, but again, remember, if you can't attend in person because it is a weekend, I appreciate that you've got to spend time with your family. You can actually either purchase a recording. Anyone that attends in person or books books or workshop will actually get the recording so that you can go through the learnings thereafter as well. Now I'll put this up because I thought this was quite quirky. And if you're waiting for a sign, this is it. Now is the time. Because remember, the hotel industry is so buoyant. And it's so it's so um, it's ready. Sorry, someone said come and put the car the sign up uh, the link up again. It's such a strong strategy because remember now Everywhere you think that you could rent a room, uh, everywhere the, the hotel industry is on fire at the moment. And remember, with Brexit, people will be looking to take more and more holidays in the UK. And that may not just be tourist locations, that could be any city in the UK as well. One thing that we three words you've got to remember break even points. And they're the things that we're going to be concentrating on to make sure that you guys 
that news. So whilst we're, uh, a couple of people say, can we go through some of the questions? Happy to do that. Carol, are you still with me? I'm still here, yes, and very happy to continue. Okay, so fine. So, <clears throat> so we put in there, let me just quickly go through. If, if you've got a question, now is your time to ask. Now, I know that's quite a few people. Uh, okay, so Jimmy has put, what is the minimum starter capital for SA from your experience? Now, Jimmy, here's a beautiful thing. With SA, it can be as little as zero, and it can be as much as, Carol, how much would it cost to furnish a two-bedroom apartment? Well, um, I'll be sharing on the course three sources who will allow you to lease the furniture. Um, so if, you have, if money is tight, which it was for me in the beginning, um, that's, that shouldn't be an issue at all. Um, you can lease it and in the meantime you can get up live with Booking.com and all the rest of it and your money will start coming in. I mean, when I went live with my first one on Booking.com it was a bit of a culture shock because one minute I had no bookings and 24 hours later I had 50 bookings. <laughs> okay. So, so it, it, it's a bit crazy when you when you join with them. Be, be prefer, prepared for a good few bookings from the off, which is brilliant, obviously. Okay, great. So Jimmy's put. Do you, do you personally meet and greet uh, when they arrive? No, Jimmy, you don't. Just purely because no. by doing that, you know, with all due respect, they they turn up at all different times in the day. Some people may check in at two o'clock. Some people may check in at eight o'clock. Some people may even check in at ten o'clock. Now, do you want to be that person on call? I don't think so. So the one thing that we're trying to do is get you to create this into a business. Um, so keep moving forward. Now, Sammy, there's a couple of questions regarding the local council. Now, permissions, what do you require? Because from uh, this uh, planning permission, a bit of a grey area because it's not considered a HMO. It's not considered a hotel. It's not considered a B&B. So, a lot of councils don't know actually what to uh, what to throw at. So, what's your answer to that, Carol? Uh, well, my council certainly doesn't. Um, when I inquired from my council, what type of planner permission I needed, and um, you know, what should I do, and what do I need to do, they they scratched their heads and said, "Well, perhaps you'd better ring the fire department." And then when I rang them up, they said, well, perhaps you'd better ring the Environmental Health Department. But I've been keeping tabs on it because obviously we want to operate legally. And uh, my council, which is Cambridge, obviously, there's two councils in Cambridge, uh, but their policy hasn't changed since then. But I do suspect that there probably will be some legislation uh, because uh, coming in at some point down the line uh, because service is getting so big all over the country now. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so, Phil, uh, Phil's book, Carol added double booking last week with Airbnb and booking. How do you avoid these, please? Now, actually, Phil, that's quite an easy one because I'm assuming you're not using a channel manager. A channel manager would have avoided that. Is that correct? Yeah, he obviously isn't using a channel manager. Okay, so keep, keep moving forward. Uh, so I'm sorry, I'm just having a quick look at the, uh, a lot of the questions are pretty much repeated, talking about what permissions you require. Now, let's have a quick look, because Carol rent out the apartments by the room. So Carol, you rent out, yeah, so Claire's asked, does Carol rent the apartments out by the room as well, or by the apartments? Now the beauty of it is that you could do either. You don't have to rent it out by the room, it would potentially be more profitable. Now remember, going back to my spreadsheet, now one thing that you could do is have a look uh, from your spreadsheet. Remember here we're charging £80 per night, uh, technically speaking. Just imagine that you have that as room one. Now we can adapt this in any way, shape or form. And for anyone that attends a workshop, you can actually get that. Uh, you'll be able to get, obviously, the work, um, spreadsheet as well. Now, in there, you can calculate it what it would be for per room. You can calculate what it would be per for the apartments and have a look at what works best. You've also got to take into consideration, you've got to look at what the demand in your location is, and that's one thing that Carol, uh, that's one thing that Carol will be looking at. So, Carol, how long in total have you been involved in SA? Um, well, I... 
I've been doing it now for 18 months, so since April 2015, and um, I went to learn how to do it eight months after I opened my first service, uh, and that's thanks to my hospitality bank, uh, background, and th that's how easy it is. All, all I had to do was learn uh, all the systems, so as I didn't have to do the work. That was my main aim on going to that course in December 2015, but that's how easy it is. Okay, so uh, you know uh, the money you make compared to the to yeah, rent to rent, sorry. it's amazing. Okay, Carol, just quickly trying to get through some of these questions. Uh, yeah. So Ben has asked that um, with regards to mortgage lenders' consent. Again, what normally happens with that is the uh, do you normally put the onus back on the the landlord where they have to landlord. make sure that they get the correct consent? Yeah, yeah, that's the landlord's problem, not mine. So in my uh, contract, my management agreement, I say that it's up to the landlord to clear to clear it with their mortgage provider. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. So Phil has asked, "What's the best apartment size to use? A two bed, or a three bed?" Now, the good, the one thing I would say, Phil, is that with this it's good to have apartments of all sizes, so it's from studios, one beds, two beds, and three beds. The reason we would say that Definitely. is purely because an individual renting a three bed apartment may rattle around like a tin, uh, appear in a tin can. Now, whereas they may look to, an, a, let's just say an individual may just want a small room, a small studio for the night or for two or three nights. Uh, so just so the Carol, what would you what would your answer be to that? Yeah, definitely, um, definitely have them in all shapes and sizes uh, because uh, I have a few regular customers now who contact us directly and they say, "Can I stay in my usual room or my usual?" Um, and I can move them around a bit. But because I know what they're used to, I'll move them to a similar size place to where they usually stay, as and when possible. Okay. So another question that's come straight in uh, from Jimmy is that, for argument's sake, for some of the apartments that you got, do you get leaseholders or the leaseholder or the freeholders' consent, or again, is that something that the landlord is to make sure that they've got in place before you rent the property off them? Well, one of them, uh, my landlord was um, denied the leaseholder's consent, uh, or the freeholder's consent, rather, so he bought the freehold. <laughs> okay, perfect. Right, now, uh, now Ganesh has put, do you teach in your course how to, to make it work in London too, because London is a different market? Ganesh, believe it or yeah, not. Yeah, can I, can I ask, why is everybody so worried about London? London is the best place to be doing it in. Well, don't worry, because what we will be doing is that in London, we'll be showing you exactly how to make it work, because it's the easiest place to make it work, because of the mass of public and the mass of tourism there. So, yeah. Ganesh, yes, I can, we can say that we'll definitely be looking at the London market. And one thing that we will be doing for all delegates will be specifically spending time showing you the demand in that location, showing you what rents it or what sorry, I keep calling it rent because I'm going back to my landlord, but we'll be showing you how to, what kind of um, charges to charge per night. Uh, Bob says, I'm current, I'm out of the country around four times a year. Uh, can it still be managed? Now, Bob, the beauty of that service accommodation is yes, it can, because believe it or not, all bookings are done online. You just sit back and you get your statement from people like Booking.com and Airbnb showing you which bookings have been made, providing that you've got the person, uh, providing you've got the cleaners in place and providing that you've got all the people in place, you don't have to be there. This is not like managing a HMO. This is not like managing a single let. This is not like managing a letting agency. This is very much a systemized business. So if you're out of the country, as long as you've got access to email, you'll be seeing who books and when. You don't need to worry about making sure that the properties are double booked because we're going to be showing you which channel managers to use, which channel managers are best, and how they operate so that they don't get double booked 
and you know exactly who's in your property, what, where and when. So keep moving on. <sighs> so uh, Tessa has asked, do you charge the same room if two people share one room? I do. I charge the same price for the room, whether that's one person or two people. Okay, perfect. So Sammy is there. Can you tell me the time and the call starts uh, starts and finishes? We'll start at nine o'clock. We will finish at five o'clock. So it is Saturday the 29th. Uh, it is Saturday the 29th of September. Uh, sorry, October. September. October. <laughs> uh, it's in Birmingham and it's nine till five. Uh, right, okay, Sam is put, would it work in a flat inside a tower block? Um, probably not, because they, if it's a, it depends on what the tower block looks like from the outside, uh, because the outside area, or surrounding area, has to be reasonably attractive. The one thing that you've got to take into consideration, again, uh, first, sorry, just going back to seeing who's asked a question. Um, Sammy, I think it was. Right, okay, yeah, Sammy. So, one thing that you've got to take into consideration, Sammy, is that if you saw a picture of your tab block on booking.com or somewhere like Airbnb, would you book it? Remember, this is the key to it. Photography, again, is the key which we'll be talking about on the workshop. and. And you've also got to take into consideration is that location, what's it close to, you know, uh, is it close to transport links? The beautiful thing about London is that everything is accessible. So you can actually stop outside the main areas of London and still get into London very easily. So just going through all the questions. Um, okay, so Anthony's put, how much does it cost to purchase a recording without attending in person? Unfortunately, Anthony, it will be the same price because you'll be getting the documents. So we'll be offering you the documents that you can acquire the property of the landlord. We'll be showing you which documents. You'll be getting the recording of the whole day. You'll be getting the documents that Carol provides to her, uh, not, well, to her customers. So it is pretty much a full package so that you can start the very next day. Um, okay, so. Andrew says, will this be effective near an airport? Right, Andrew, okay. If anything, that's a beautiful place to have one because think about it, when you go to an airport, when, when you stop by an airport, all the airports generally have hotels around them. Why do you think the hotels are located there? They're located there because they know there's going to be a mass of public there. And Anywhere that's going to have a mass of public is going to be a great area for a service accommodation. Remember, what you're offering, you're in direct competition with a hotel. A hotel can only offer that guest a room, and then on that basis, they then have to go down to the communal uh, to the communal restaurant to eat, or they have to go out to eat. What you're offering them is an apartment where they can come in, they can put their luggage down, they can relax before the night or after, before the flight or after the flight and relax. So I don't really, you know, if anything, that is the easiest place. So Claire, as, uh, Claire said, uh, Claire said that uh, sound had gone. Right. <clears throat> so uh, Phil said, uh, are the documents in paper format or files like on a USB so that we can use a PC to look at everything or is it both? No, so Phil, if you attend the workshop on the day, you will get them in paper form and you will also get them in electronic format as well. So you'll get them in both formats. Uh, okay, so quickly going through. Uh, Ron support, if you have a two bedroom apartment, is it a problem with two unrelated bookings in the same place? Carol? Um, you, what you're basically driving at there probably is sharing the same bathroom. Um, no. Um, you would think it would be, but it's not. Um, we make very clear on our headline of our advert, whichever room in whichever house shared bathroom, that's in the heading. Um, we're totally transparent with the guest in our descriptions online. 
therefore if the guest tries to dispute anything we can say politely to them well actually um, that is all described online um, re you know read the description it's all there um, I don't I don't say it to my guests but if I'm going somewhere I read everything before I go okay here's an interesting one Sammy's book if I join the course will Carol help me get one in Cambridge where she lives and show me how to run it remotely I never you guess what Sammy if you get one in, <laughs> uh, if you get one in Cambridge in actual fact you may be able to actually JV with Carol how is it because you want to learn about how to do it remotely Carol may actually become your business partner so um, Eddie Sport so uh, sorry sorry it's not Eddie uh, Elodie said so they in actual fact share the kitchen as well it's true yes they do but you've got to remember they're not sharing it for six months at a time they're sharing it for one or two nights in between that you've got the cleaners they will make sure that the property is spotless so that you're not walking in on someone else's washing so to speak so okay so um, Now, here's a question that Andrew's asked, uh, Carol said, what insurance is required? Um, you should really get specialist um, uh, service insurance. Um, I have, the company I'm with is uh, Discount Insurance Services. There's another company called Adrian Flux, but I also have public liability and professional indemnity insurance anyway. Uh, because SA is not my only strategy, I'm a multi-strategy investor. Uh, but for, for the SA specifically, uh, as I say, I'm with Discount Insurance Services. Okay, great. So, uh, sorry, Jimmy just asked another question. Will we get a sample management agreement on the course? Yes, you will. That's all part yeah. of it. All the agreements that you require to get you up and running the very next day. <coughs> so, just going through, I think we've pretty much answered the majority of the questions. Um, so on average, sorry, so G has asked, how much on average does Carol charge per night for an SA room in South Cambridge City? Um, depending on the size of the room and depending on whether or not it's an ensuite, my cheapest room is £40 during the week and that, that, that cheap room is 19 99 on a Sunday night. And uh, my dearest room is eighty. One of my own suites say is eighty pounds on a Saturday night, uh, sixty-five pounds during the week, and twenty-nine ninety-nine on a Sunday night. Okay. Well, see, I think still that's very reasonable for Cambridge. Now, I know friends that have got service accommodation units in Milton Keynes. They're charging one hundred and eighty, one hundred and ninety pound a night. Now, again, they're very clocked on. Uh, they're very clocked onto the scenario where they look at all the events that are happening around the city and the prices increase according to, remember, elasticity, supply and demand. They very easily look at that. So, um, okay, so uh, for this point, to get the property, do you offer the landlord exactly the market rent as for a single let? Now remember, Phil, there's no right or wrong answer to this because, again, it all depends on how much rent you're going to charge, how many, uh, and you then, once you understand what the rent that the landlord wants, you can then put it into your calculator, which you're going to be getting on the workshop, and on the back of that calculator, it'll be telling you, is it going to work? Now, if you need 90% occupancy just to break even, it's not worth doing because the cash flow is going to be very low. What you need to have a look at is what the rent is and how much you can be getting, how you, how you can get it generating, and only offer what you think is acceptable for it to make a decent cash flow. Hopefully that works. So Carol, uh, one thing: uh, have you got any? Have you got any currently on Booking.com at the moment? Uh, Claire's asked, could we send her a link? Um, so what we'll be doing is. Sammy is how to get in touch with Carol. You'll be meeting Carol, providing that you've booked on, you'll be meeting Carol on the on the workshop, which is on the 29th of October. Uh, sorry, just going through some of these. So again, there's three ways of attending it. You can attend in person, you can live stream the whole event, or you can purchase the recording and get all the associated documents. <coughs> and on that note,
Um, we'd like to thank you for taking the time to be on this webinar. If you're smart, hungry and motivated, you could definitely do this. So if you, uh, I can imagine there's still going to be some more questions. You know, with all due respect, we can't teach you everything that you can, that you'd need to know about the strategy in one hour or just over one hour. If you've got some other questions, please let me know. What you can do is that I'm going to be on the phone for a short while thereafter. I'm just going to get charged because it's just died. But you can contact me on my mobile, 07967 016 425. Or you can email me, arsh at there's one thing to bear in mind, guys, is that the offer of two for one expires at midnight tonight. And if anyone calls me tomorrow and asks, we'll say, unfortunately, it's a charge per person. So if you like the thought of anything that we've mentioned tonight, feel free to get in contact, get yourself booked on. Uh, so let's just put, can we put the, can we put the link back up again? Um, and there we have it. So on that note, guys, I'd like to say thank you very much for being online with us. Carol, thank you for very much for being online with us. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed Carol's straight talking and content rich webinar. Carol, have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I have. And thank you, everybody, for attending. And uh, my friend Valerie from London, thank you for attending as well. I know you're online listening in. Okay, fantastic. And if there are any other questions, feel free to get in contact. Uh, if not, we look forward to seeing you on the workshop. Um, we look forward to seeing you on the workshop on the 29th of October in Birmingham. And no doubt we'll speak to you all soon. Take care. Good night. God bless. Good night.